Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. That th this is really loud, isn't it? Um, if you are still eating, please continue, continue to enjoy your meal. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started, though. On behalf of the city of Jacksonville, I do want to uh, welcome you here today. It's very much my pleasure to welcome you to our third annual advisory committee reception dinner. Or, so, a recognition dinner, excuse me. Uh, National Volunteer Appreciation Week is this week, April 12th through the 18th, and I can think of no better time of the year for council and I, along with the uh, staff of our city, to express our sincere gratitude to you for the service that you do all year long for this community as a member of a city uh, committee or board. Thank you for sharing your time and your knowledge and experience, and especially for your, your sincere interest in working with us to make our city the best place it can be. I will now ask our city attorney, Mr. John Carter, to pronounce the invocation. John. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we pause at this time to give you thanks to give you thanks for this beautiful day, for the rain showers that we've enjoyed, for the warm temperatures, and for all the blessings that you so graciously bestow upon us individually and upon us collectively as the city of Jacksonville. We give thanks tonight, especially for these advisory board members who are here and who volunteer their time and their talent so that we can have a better city for all of our citizens to live and enjoy. We especially give thanks for the life and the service of Herb DeVusser, who will be recognized this evening. We remember, as always, and we pray for our military members who are serving us here and around the world to keep us safe and secure. We pray for their safety. We pray for their anxious families. We give thanks for the food that we have so enjoyed this evening, and we pray that you would use it for our health and wholeness of life so that we may continue to be of service to you and to others. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Each of you are citizen advisors to the city leadership, or in the case of the Board of Adjustment, you are a voice of common sense that we wish was in the law. Your service to our city is noble, and it is important. This dinner is to express our appreciation in a tangible manner. It is a small demonstration that your mayor and council appreciate you and your service. You are a volunteer for our city. You are part of what makes our city a great place. We want you to hear from someone else <clears throat> who works to make this a better place. Junie Christian has a mashed up favorite saying, service before self, and if you see a turtle on a fence post, he didn't get there by himself. Very clever. Just as you answered the call for service to your city, Junie answered a call a few years ago when the Onslow Women's Center was in trouble. He had been associated with some nonprofits in the, his former home Columbus, of Columbus, Georgia, and he was recruited to help with advancing nonprofits here, including working with your city in nonprofit education, and more importantly, with the quality enhancement for nonprofit organizations operated by UNC Wilmington. So he got the call asking if he would consider six months help to right the ship at the Women's Center. He stayed on well past that six months and he is doing a wonderful job. His extremely capable leadership is making the Women's Center a proud nonprofit who is performing noble service. Junie's path to Jacksonville is connected by way of his wonderful spouse, Angela Cole Christian. We met her when she was served as assistant county manager, and she's now serving as the town manager for Newport. 
Junie was born in Antigua in the British West Indies and came to be an American citizen in 1991. He served 24 years in the Army and then began what his legacy of service to his community of Columbus, Georgia, that included serving leading nonprofits, civic groups, and hosting a television show. I mentioned to you his favorite saying drawn from the Rotary Club mantra and a political joke about people who don't realize helping others is important. Just as the turtle is helpless on top of the post, someone has to help him get off that post because he can't get down by himself. Junie Christian helps people. He serves and he gets things done. We are honored to have him here with us tonight uh, to honor you for your service. So ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Junie Christian. Would everybody please rise to your feet? Now listen carefully to the sound of my voice. If you're born in the month of January, go ahead and sit down. I don't like you. <laughs> January, sit down. If you're born in February, have a seat. March, April, and May, you can have a seat also. July, August, and September, go ahead and have a seat. October, November, and December, please take your seat. Which means the persons that are standing should be born in the month of June, am I correct? What month are you in? October. October? You can sit down too. <laughs> I'm sorry, yes, go ahead. All right, so the folks standing should be June birth, correct? All righty. Now listen carefully. Those of you, if you are born from the 1st to the 5th, sit down. If you are born to the 1st to the 5th. You're the only one left standing, right? Please join me. What's your name, sir? Gil Stewart. Gil Stewart. You know, sometimes just for being a volunteer, you happen to be in the right place at the right time. And I have a check. It's a hot check. Uh, there may be some money in it, but it's $25 for your favorite charity. Be well. Thank you, sir. It is also payment for the only applause that I might get at the end of the speech. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, thank you so much for that uh, wonderful introduction. And I promise I won't keep you long. As the young lady next to me sitting at the desk said, you know, um, you can talk as long as the Lord leads you, but make sure he leads you in about two minutes to get off the stage. <laughs> My entrance into the United States was not as grand as that as, uh, of Eddie Murphy. If you remember the scene and Eddie Murphy woke up to soft music and butterflies and, and fanfare and uh, his eyes flooded open and uh, uh, folks walked in front of him with petals. Mine was really simple. It was a Pan Am airline, June 22nd, 1969, and I ended up in the South Bronx. That was my first introduction to the United States. I heard over here, oh God. <laughs> I was 15 years old, and I came to this promised land called America. And I had no idea because on the island of Antigua, we had 365 beautiful beaches. My dad was the superintendent of the prison. And life was good for a 15-year-old. Life was beautiful. So how did I end up in this vast, vast country in the South Bronx? Well, as you can tell, it went south really, really quick in the South Bronx. And bear with me as I tell you this story. For you see, when I was 15, I had really no supervision in the South Bronx. None whatsoever. Every day that I got up, I did things on my own. There were no great leaders in that community of the South Bronx. 
658 Cortona Park South. There were no great leaders. There were no volunteers. There were no examples that I could reach out to and say, that's somebody I want to be like. Well, the journey continued. Fast forward about three years, and I'm standing at the corner of 42nd Street, right where the ball drops every year during uh, New Year's Eve celebration. And you Marines will enjoy this. I walked into the Marine station, went to see the Marine because he had on that beautiful uniform. You know the one. The one, no matter how ugly you are, you're going to get the girl. <laughs> I couldn't pass that up. I think I may need a police escort out of here, Chief. <laughs> But when I walked back and I went to see that Marine, and he looked at me and he, he basically said to me, you're not one of the few good men that we're looking for. And dejected, I turned around and I walked out, and Sergeant Godfrey was standing out. He was an Army soldier. He was overweight, obviously. He, he was. He was. Back in the day, we didn't pay a whole lot of attention to that stuff. But he was overweight, and he was smoking a cigarette. And he asked me, he said, son, what's wrong? I said, well, I just got rejected. And my options are headed back to the South Bronx with no real future. Well, he fast forward, he helped me out. He said, I'll give you a $1,500 bonus. I'll stick you in the 82nd. You can jump out of airplanes. And so began my journey. That's when I start running into leaders in a community. That's when I started seeing another part of America, the part that makes a difference in people's lives. In Fayetteville, North Carolina, I started running into African-American leaders who were fraternity brothers, members of fraternities, who taught me how to dress, how to look, tried to teach me how to play basketball, but I could only use my legs to play soccer. But I began to see the power of volunteerism. I began to see how volunteers could make a, a difference. After that, I went to Germany, spent a total of 10 years. And there in Germany, I also saw in towns like Aschaffenburg and Ansbach and Munich and Nuremberg and, and, uh, um, and other cities, I began to see exactly how citizens who were not paid I began to see how they make an impact on their towns, from beautification to uh, children's services, how they surround children as volunteers out of parks and rec with meaningful activities and caring adults. Leaving Germany, then coming back to Kentucky, again in the little town of Kentucky, a little city in Kentucky, Radcliffe, Kentucky, again running into citizen soldiers who volunteer and make a difference in the community, making sure the garbage gets picked up. Those are little small things that people don't really think about. And they think that it's only done by professionals, but professionals leverage you as volunteer to make these things happen. My biggest education, however, came in two places. One is Columbus, Georgia where Columbus, Georgia had a downtown area not unlike the one that we are enjoying here in Jacksonville. And volunteers transformed that downtown area. First, they started with beautification of every exit that comes into Columbus. It's a pleasure to drive into Columbus, to watch the trees and the flowers and to see the beautification. Some of the things that are happening here because of volunteers. But now when you visit Columbus, Georgia, it's anchored on one end by a beautiful civic center and on the other end by a huge credit card processing company. And there's no doubt in my heart, in my mind, that it's going to happen right here in Jacksonville, that we will continue to transform our city, our town, and to bring it from where it was to the great place it is now and beyond but it doesn't happen in a vacuum. If you ever watch commercials on television, especially those commercials that deal with health, you take this pill and it should calm your nerves or it should calm your 
blood pressure. But then there's a whole bunch of side effects. Have you seen those side effects? Well, let me share a little bit about those side effects. Uh, extreme nausea. Bone softening. Explosive upset stomach diarrhea for those of you. <laughs> Amnesia. Inability to smell or taste. Temporary blindness. Paranoia. Dry mouth. Loss of libido. That's the one I can't stand. <laughs> but let me tell you what happens when you volunteer. Do you know that a lot of that stuff is reversed? When you volunteer, instead of having extreme nausea, you are the peptal bismol in a city. Do you feel me? You are the people who sit in rooms every day, sit in meetings, collaborating, speaking, with the energy that, needs, that you need to transform your city. Instead of having stiff muscles, your muscles become supple, strong, and you don't mind putting your shoulder up against the wheel along with other strong folks from Jacksonville and the surrounding area to make a difference. You don't suffer from diarrhea anymore. Though some of the chairperson will say, just stop talking and that will be fixed. <laughs> But it doesn't, all of those things that ail you begin to change. Volunteerism has some wonderful things. And I'll take you down to the last one. It's, there's been a study that says nine out of 10 women would prefer to be with a volunteer than Justin Bieber. <laughs> Go ahead. So volunteerism, on the funny side, has some wonderful, wonderful side effects. And no doubt there are stories among you of how Jacksonville used to be and how it is now because of your service. As one leader told me earlier, is that you, is that you, they, you leverage what the city does, what the professionals do, and you are the eyes and the ears of the citizens so that they can hear your voice. And I think that's just an absolute wonderful thing. I'll end with just this little story about volunteers. And some of you may have heard it before. But it was a volunteer, not unlike someone who works for Parks and Recreation, my favorite. And it has to do with a country club. And what happened is that the city manager sent that volunteer to the country club because the city had about $10,000, but they wanted to leverage that $10,000 to get some more cash. The volunteer showed up at the country club and knocked on the door. And the guy who was supposed to open that door and come out and say, come on in, looked at that volunteer from Parks and Rec with his sleeves rolled up no tie, and told him, you can't come in. He said, why? Is it because I'm from Parks and Rec? He said, no, sir, you don't have a tie. Well, dejected, he went back to his uh, car, and he called the city manager and said, well, I can't come in. Of course, you know what Dr. Woodruff is going to say. <laughs> you better find a way to get me my money. <laughs> And so that great volunteer went back in, in the back of that, his car, a typical Parks and Rec volunteer car. He started searching for a tie. He looked in the glove compartment, no tie. Onto the seat, no tie. Went back and opened the trunk, looked beyond all that stuff that's in the bottom there, all the baseball gear and everything that he has, to, no tie. But lo and behold, gentle, ladies and gentlemen, there was an awesome set of jumper cables. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And you know what a creative volunteer does. You see them do it every day here in our city. They find creative ways to get the job done. You find creative ways to fix problems. So this great volunteer took those jumper cables, tied the most beautiful Windsor knot around his neck, and went clicking and clacking back to the door. <laughs> Knocked on the door. The gentleman came and looked and said, uh, can I help you? He said, well, can I come in now? Now wait for it. He said, yes, you can, but you can't start nothing. <laughs> Don't let anyone tell you that as a volunteer, you can't start nothing. You are the bridge between the citizens and the city. What you do every day, what you do every day makes a huge, huge difference. And it is the truth. There are lots of things that end up on the fence post as turtles in our city. But I guarantee you, they wouldn't get solved without your service, your love, and your participation. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Well, I, I'll tell you what, uh, Jenny, you're very entertaining and engaging as a speaker. Uh, very well done. It's really wonderful to have someone uh, of, of Junie's caliber as a leader uh, here in our community, you know, running the Women's Center. You're doing a great job. And you know, the one thing that differentiates you from a lot of people uh, that have, how do you say, preceded you? You really care. You really care about this community. You go beyond the Women's Center, I think you really care about this community at, at, at large. And thank you very much for what you do. At this time, I'd like to acknowledge each of our advisory committees along with their liaison and staff. And uh, when the name of the committee you serve is called, I'd like for uh, all the committee members, the li uh, liaisons and the staff to please stand for a round of applause. And I'll start with the Board of Adjustment. Uh, we have our our council uh, member, council liaison is Councilman Jerry Bittner, uh, and our staff liaison is Gary Willett, and other, our, our staff person is Debbie Jefferson. <laughs> Tom mm -hmm. Next, we have our Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee, our council liaison. To that committee is Councilwoman Angela Washington. Our staff liaison is Glenn Hargett. And staff person is Carmela George. Here's Carmela. All members of the uh, Environmental and Appearance Commission, please stand. The Planning Advisory Board. I've seen several members here tonight. If you would please stand. That's the Planning Advisory Board. Our Council Liaison to the Planning Advisory Board is Council Member Bob Warden. And Ryan King is, a, is our Staff Liaison. Thank you very much. Our Community Development Advisory Committee uh, we have uh, council member Jerome Willingham is our liaison, but I don't think he's present. Uh, our staff liaison is Lily Gray, and uh, Tracy Jackson is our staff support person. Tracy. Our Recreation and Parks Advisory Committee. We have council member Jerome Willingham is also the council liaison to that committee. Uh, Mike LaCorey and Susan Baptiste are our staff liaisons. <laughs> All members uh, present of the Recreation and Parks Advisory Committee. 
Thank you so much for coming out and for what you do. Our Water and Sewer Advisory Committee, Council Member Randy Thomas is our Council Liaison, and Wally Hansen is our staff, uh, staff Liaison. All members of the Water and Sewer Advisory Committee, please rise for recognition. And all other support staff that are here tonight, I know we have a lot of help from the city manager's office and also from the clerk's office, so if you'd please stand and be recognized. And anybody else? Our city attorney, I forgot about finance. Mm -hmm. I'd also like to take a moment to acknowledge the supporting services again, like I said, and, and those folks have uh, really put a, a lot into uh, to making our volunteer organizations work well for our city. <clears throat> we are so uh, deeply appreciative of the service of each and every one of you that are here tonight and all those that weren't able to make it. And that is why this evening we mourn the loss of one of our members and celebrate the life of Herbert DeVusser. He grew up in a Catholic orphanage and joined the Marines. He excelled in the Marine Corps and eventually teaching hand-to-hand -hand combat to Navy SEALs. He was a fourth degree black belt in Judo and he enjoyed passing his skill on to others, especially young people. He dedicated more than seven years teaching Judo to many young men and women. Mr. DeVusser retired from the U.S. Marine Corps as a master gunnery sergeant. He lived out his faith and the care for others when he associated with the Lutheran Brotherhood. He's known for his care and compassion rather than as a persistent insurance and financial advisor. Herb is most of those who helped him knew him or helped knew him as uh, he worked out pre-planning financial arrangements that met each person's needs. And when it involved life insurance, his service and care for those left behind has been lauded in writing and in testimony by many. His service to his church, to his family, and to his community is similar in how dedicated and caring he was. For 62 years, he was together with Diana and what a team they were. A force to be reckoned with. They were, together, a team that raised a proud family, created a wonderful business, and were involved in almost all the good things that happened in our community, including the founding of Oslo Community Ministries, now known as Oslo Community Outreach, the operators of the soup kitchen, homeless shelter, free clinic, and home of Christmas cheer. When one would volunteer, you frequently got both, and if food was involved, it likely was Herb who prepared it. They loved to welcome people to their home. They loved to share their lives with others, and they loved living in and serving Jacksonville together. For the civic side, Mr. DeVusser was a charter member of the Jacksonville Breakfast Rotary Club, an original member and past president and treasurer for the Estate Planning Council of Oslo County, as well as past member of the Military Affairs Committee. For his service to the city, Mr. DeVusser began his volunteer service in 1977 when he was appointed to the newly created Jacksonville Citizen Advisory Council on Community Development. This, is, this was the precursor committee to our current Community Devel Development Advisory Committee. Mr. DeVusser served on the CACCD from 1977 until 1982 when Jacksonville became an entitlement community and the scope of community development changed. During his service on the Community Develop Board, Development Board, he was elected in 19, 1979 by his peers to represent the city on the Coastal Area Management Act Citizens Advisory Committee. This group had the tough task of helping to project future development in our fast-growing community. 
They gave advice to the city about what areas should be in conservation and what areas were likely to be transitional. This citizens committee involved developers, planners, conservationists, and was a massive undertaking for the first time. Herb served continuously as a member of the Jacksonville Board of Adjustment for more than 17 years, from January 1977 until the time of his passing on October 19, 2014. During his 17 years of service, Herb served in a leadership role many times, including serving as chairman from 1997 through 2001 and as vice chairman from 2011 to 2014. His service to city government is why this recognition is given this evening. But we honor his life, his compassion and service to others, and the dedication to this community with this recognition. Herb DeVusser could be on the poster for what volunteer service looks like. Herb DeVusser could be recognized alone for his service to the city government, but it is, it is the whole of the service of Herb that we celebrate this evening. Herb DeVusser is a man who overcame a rough start in life and came to leave the Marine Corps as an honored service member. Herb DeVusser is a man whose next career served and assisted others. Herb DeVusser is a man whose life was filled with compassion, dedication, service, and volunteerism. It is for that reason that this evening we give special recognition to the life and service of Herb DeVusser. I would like to ask Diana if you would join me up front here please to accept the award on behalf of your husband. <coughs> He's going to be greatly missed. I know that he's going to be he's greatly missed already at the McDonald's at 17 and non slow. <laughs> The recognition reads in grateful appreciation to Herbert J. DeVusser for his dedicated service from 1977 to 2014 to the citizens of the city of Jacksonville and for his passion to make this a better place to live, work, and play. Thank you. And thank you for all you did to support Herb. You, like I said, y'all were a team. We were a team, and I just want to thank you because he did love Jacksonville. and. I, he wasn't a big talker unless he really knew what he wanted to say. And then he said a lot. And probably tonight, if he was here, he'd probably go home and bake each one of you as a cheesecake to, <laughs> to, to say thank you. I, I do thank you for this, Mayor. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. For the, those of you that did not know Herb, he was quite the character. But it was such an honor to be able to recognize him tonight for the service that he left behind. Before we end the evening, let me once again say on behalf of myself and the city council that, uh, that thank you for volunteering on a, city, uh, on a city advisory committee or board. We really do appreciate it. And there's a lot of things that we just would not be able to do without virtue of your volunteerism. You know, the, the gracious gift of your time and energy mean a lot to this city. Thank you for the work that we did in December. There's some debate whether it was in December or in January anyway, but uh, it's going back and forth. When we had that meeting, remember? At the council and the committee summit, uh, which brought us together to discuss uh, current and future projects. Uh, your ideas and insights uh, were so helpful. And, and the, the thing about it is, uh, Again, just having that uh, short little period of time that we spent together in that room over there at the, at the uh, uh, youth center over there, we came up with so many brilliant ideas. But you know, the thing about it is when you're, when you're doing, looking at making yourself better, there is no bad ideas. You know, the thing about it is, you know, some are better than others, but there are no bad ideas. There's one thing I know for sure that we all love Jacksonville and are committed to its future. And thank you very much again for what you do because without your service, this city would, exist, would, not, would not exist in the way that it does. Thank you so much and have a great evening. <laughs>